In these uncertain times in India, I collected a set of questions regarding COVID-19 that my friends and family including me had. I then reached out to these panel of doctors, Dr. Samiran Panda, director and scientist at ICMR and Nari, Executive Director Medical Coal India Limited, CMO and Deputy CMO Coal India Limited headquarters. They answered questions and gave some great advice related to these topics and in this video we are going to cover this topic. First of all, thank you everyone uh, for agreeing to do this interview. Uh, I will not take any uh, extra time and quickly jump on to question. Let's start with some pre-COVID questions. So people, we know that people can be asymptomatic, right? But if someone has symptoms, what are the symptoms that are definitive indication that they have COVID? <clears throat> there was this attempt of uh, looking into the symptoms and can one really figure out uh, from the symptoms, um, a clinical suspicion that uh, this particular individual who has come with a constellation of symptoms, uh, the technical mm -hmm. term for this is syndrome. So mm -hmm. if there is a syndrome, which is a constellation mm -hmm. of symptoms, can it be COVID? And how, how close are or would we be to the truth? Right. So the commonest symptoms uh, would be fever, cough, breathlessness and uh, recent loss of sense of taste and smell apart from that um, you know there are certain not so common symptoms but uh, there are case reports during the second wave uh, early march onwards and there are some gi symptoms gastrointestinal symptoms like you know, gi upset and uh, diarrhea even but I don't say that it's in common, but feeling fatigued, you know, uh, is also another symptom which has been reported by, by quite a few. But in okay. most of the situations, and of course, you know, the common cold or flu-like symptoms, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so it could be a combination of things and the breathlessness this time during the second wave has been right. remarkably high compared to the breathlessness that, that was there during the first wave. Uh, okay. which I had it speak in September 2020. So okay. as the breathlessness is much more, the oxygen requirement is also uh, very high now during this second okay. And in the current situation, in the present uh, state of epidemic, uh, if somebody comes with it clinically, it's quite justified. And then one need not to only uh, go for RT-PCR test uh, because sometimes RT-PCR test could be negative. But the rapid antigen test performs very well uh, okay. during this stage, and particularly for those who are symptomatic. Uh, okay. But when none, none of the diagnostic tests, and it is not only for COVID-19, for any disease, it's true that the sensitivity is never 100% and specificity is never 100%. So you will miss out some of the you know, infected individuals. So if there are symptoms which are indicative of COVID-19, uh, so one should not wait. One should really go and get himself or herself isolated in a room and uh, go for home-based care. And okay. in contacts, I'm talking about the family members or the friends who all stay together, they should also start uh, getting into quarantine uh, situation and monitor their things. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for that. Uh, are there any comorbidities that, like, there are many comorbidities listed who should be extra cautious, but are there any specific comorbidities uh, who should be extra cautious about taking precautions against COVID? If somebody is interested, they can always go to the site of the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. There is a list of 20, list. 20 right. diseases. Most commonly right. occurring comorbidities are diabetes and hypertension. Uh, okay. There has been a fantastic study and published by Lancet where um, it has been found out that uh, children uh, who are with Down syndrome, if they get mm -hmm. COVID-19, their chance of getting into the complicated or advanced stage of the disease or even, you know, the unfortunate event of fatality, that, that, that's, that is quite high. So that's why right. they should also be considered as a group uh, priority group for vaccination. Okay. So Most people... Sure. That uh, apart from all that, what uh, Dr. Panda has told there, uh, obesity is another point. It is one of the major comorbidity 
that will affect the uh, oxygenation process. And ultimately, uh, the oxygenation is the answer for it. I completely agree, yes. Uh, obesity <coughs> and the associated compromised lung function, yes. So for people who do not fall into these categories, people who are otherwise healthy, who are uh, maintaining regular exercises, uh, let's say less than 40 years of age, are there any uh, dietary supplements they should take, any, uh, any measures that they should take to ensure immunity or improve immunity? Well, there are, uh, there, there are two issues. Um, those who sort of um, uh, follow certain physical exercise and uh, you know, maintain some kind of fitness, they are, mm -hmm. of course, uh, are in an advantageous position. Um, because they are lung function and uh, in, uh, the fitness in general is right. pretty good. Right. And in, in, in all probability, their food habit will, will also be very good. So because they will not go for junk food or, you know. So I would not say that they would require to do something additional, like uh, right. start uh, as there are, you know, Talks uh, right. all around uh, during the time of COVID nineteen to pop uh, vitamin vitamin C say, vitamin D yes right, right. C. However, right. those who do not um, you know follow up physical exercise or routine or uh, mm -hmm. not so uh, healthy in terms of their food habits, uh, right. it's not a bad idea to to have you know uh, vitamin supplementations and minerals. But in India, okay. something is happening. I'm not sure about other countries, but I'm, uh, but it's not only India. So there are many claims of immune boosting agents, uh, be it herbal right. medicines, or, and uh, those, I have gone through those studies and the design is really, really poor. Uh, so the inference that they have been taking in terms of the immune boosting effect of traditional mm -hmm. medicines, uh, that really uh, lacks you know, scientific evidence. Okay, thank you so much. So we are almost done with the pre-COVID section. For interviews and other section, check the link description below or other videos in this channel.